Welcome back to my mental health and crime channel. My name is Huda London. This is for education purpose only. This is the case of Jay Slater. May he rest in peace. Jay Slater was a 19 year old boy who was found deceased in Tenerife, Spain, 29 days after he was missing. He was reported missing on the 17th of June. I wanted to show you all a couple of red flags that I find very interesting with Jay Slater's case. I personally believe it's foul play. I don't believe it was an accident. I want you all to pay attention to Lucy May, Jay's friend, who spoke to him last. I wanted you all to pay attention to what she had to say. She said that Jay called her and he said that he was in the mountains, he was thirsty and Jay actually gave her the location where he was at. She did not go to pick him up, order a taxi for him at least, a Uber. But what is interesting is, this is the red flag. Lucy May says, I told Jay if he's going to ever listen to me, he better listen now and leave the place, come down those areas before he falls, before he has a fall. Now, I find that to be very strange because Jay Slater was found 29 days later and he allegedly had a fall from the ravines, from the mountains. So was Lucy Melo just guessing that? Was that just a coincidence? Or was that a slip of the tongue? Let me know. Jay Slater disappeared after a night out with his friends on Sunday. This evening, one of them has told Sky News she felt fobbed off by police after she reported him missing and described the desperate search to find him. The 19-year-old was on the island for a music festival that was last heard from on Monday. It's his first foreign holiday away with friends. Now, he called his friend Lucy Law just after 8 o'clock on Monday morning and shared his location with her, a mountainous area in the northwest of the island, which is popular with hikers. He told her he was going to walk back to where they were staying in Los Cristianos, but that's around 30 miles away. I spoke to Lucy early this evening. I had um, I had gone home um, from the NRG festival um, a little bit earlier than everybody else um, because I was tired. So I'd gone home alone um, back to my apartment um, and then I woke up to um, um, a phone call at like half eight in the morning, around half eight, um, from Jay saying that I'd, that that had gone gone up to the mountain. Um, that his phone was on one percent, so it was like about to die. He didn't know where he was. Um, he needed a drink. Uh, um, that he'd cut all his leg on like a cactus, and that he had no idea where we were. So um, I said to him, like, if you're ever going to listen to anything I'm going to say, like, you need to listen now. You need to go back to wherever you've just come from before your phone dies, and I'll I'll come and pick you up from there. Like, you need you, you need to go back there. Um, he said to me, I can't go back there, I can't go back there, I don't know where it is. Um, so I just said, send me send me like a location. So he sent me, he sent over a screenshot of um, his last location. Um, so we, we, I went straight, I, I, the first thing I did when he, when the phone had cut off was um, I rang the police. Um, so I rang 911 um, and spoken to the 
the, the people there um, and they told me that they'd sent a helicopter out um, but later on I'd spoken to somebody who lived up in the mountains and they'd said they hadn't heard any helicopters which obviously if there was a helicopter out they definitely would have heard it so I think they just totally fobbed me off with that I, I don't even think they did um, so after like half an hour I'd had no updates so I rang back and I said has the helicopter had any sat in the room has anybody seen him like I'm really really worried they said no they've not seen anything they, 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 but they were like out looking for him so I thought right I'm not getting anywhere with this this phone call like every time I'd ring the police like, they just kept ending the phone on me like they were just so unbothered by the full situation um, so I thought right I need to get a taxi as soon as possible down to the police station and speak to them uh, in person mm. so I got taxi down to the closest um, police station I was literally there within the hour of the phone call um, so I'd gone in I said I really need to report somebody missing um, but I said it's not like they're just missing around here like he's missing in the in a very like abandoned place there's nothing up there it's just mountains um, I was uh, she, she, she gave me a piece of paper that said um, that I need to go online fill in a form um, and then within 48 hours I'd receive a cord and I'd bring the cord back to the police station um, and then I could file a report. I said, it, within 48 hours, like, it, it could be fatal. I said, this, this needs reporting right now. Um, so we'd, we'd come up, there was literally no sign of him anywhere. Like, I, I, we drove around all day, there was literally nothing, no sign of him. I went in to a restaurant that was halfway up on the viewpoint um, and is that, is that where you are now, Lucy? You're staying at the coast, but you're now up in the mountains where you think I've literally, Jay was. I've literally not slept at all since, since I've got that phone call at 8 o'clock. But we all hope that the search continues and Jay is found safe and sound. Pay attention to how when the reporter asked Lucy May if she was up in my school mountains searching for Jay she changed the subject and she said that I haven't literally slept at all was she in a hotel room was she in Moscow was she at the police station where was she at when the reporter also if she was in Moscow Lucy told Jay on the phone to listen to him to leave the place before he has a fall. I find it strange that he actually had a fall, allegedly had a fall. And she said she told the police that Jay went missing in a very abandoned place. Has she been in the mountains herself? Where was Lucy May that night? Um, a phone call at like half eight in the morning, around half eight, um, from Jay saying that I'd, that he'd gone, gone up to the mountains, um, that his phone was on 1%, so it was like, about to die. He didn't know where he was. Um, he needed a drink, uh, um, that he'd cut all his leg on like a cactus and that he had no idea where we were. So um, I said to him like, if you're ever going to listen to anything I'm going to say, like you need to listen now, you need to go back to wherever you've just come from before your phone dies and I'll, I'll come and pick you up from there, like you need, you, you need to go back there. Um, he said to me, I can't go back there, I can't go back there, I don't know where it is. Um, now picture this, a friend of yours, a 19-year-old young man who hasn't slept, who's been partying, dehydrated, calls you, says he cuts his, he cut his leg on a cactus, he's lost, he needs a drink. Wouldn't you send a cab to the location, a taxi? Wouldn't you go there yourself? Wouldn't you send someone? Wouldn't you even send the police, call for help? Why would she ask somebody who cut their leg to walk down and go back to the hotel? 
this does not make sense, the motel. And what does Lucy May, Lucy May Law mean? But listen to me and come down before you fall from the before you fall from the mountain, or be, before you have a fall. What does she mean by that? Was Jay in a place that he could have a serious fall? Sounds like she needs location. What is she hiding? Why doesn't she show her face on camera? Is it because she doesn't want people who have experience with body language to understand and see when she's clearly lying? As a licensed mental health counselor, I was looking forward to seeing Lucy May's face and listening to her words. But it just makes it so difficult when somebody turns their back to the camera. I personally believe she's lying. And Jay said that he didn't want to go back. What was he scared of? I believe it's one of the two. I've always said I don't believe Jay even made it to Moscow. But if he did, I believe, I personally believe Jay was set up. Maybe Tommy Hilton, Tom Hilton was there. Because the picture clearly looked like Tom Hilton. Jay was involved in a case, may rest in peace, that was so violent and aggressive that someone, trigger warning, his skull was left open. Jay did not get a long sentence, whether he was involved or not, and that could have easily triggered Tom Hilton. I'm not saying that's what happened, but rage, anger, Revenge, jealousy can all be a motive of unliving someone. Here today, first of all, how are you feeling about the way things are? You know, it's 72 hours since you spoke to Jay. Well, it's actually even been longer than 72 hours now. It was 72 hours at half eight this morning. And obviously that, that's a long time to be going with that. You've come back up here today, first of all, how are you feeling about the way things are? You know, it's 72 hours since you spoke to Jay. Well, it's actually even been longer than 72 hours now. It was 72 hours at half eight this morning. And obviously that, that's a long time to be going without food, without water. And I just think with the amount of time that's gone by, I feel like a little bit more could have been done on the authorities part over here. Um, but yeah, it's been awful. I've, I, honestly, I've never been so worried in my life. Like. I, I, it's just the unknown as well, like you literally just, you don't know what's happened, you don't know where he's gone, like his last drop pin wasn't even on a road, like there's a reason he's gone off road I think, like why why is he not carried on the path, he's not a stupid boy, do you know what I mean, like he would have stayed on the road, like this. it was at 8am as well, so. Wasn't it said that Alfieria, the woman who was running the Airbnb, saw Jay when he was dry, when he was walking the opposite direction. So why is Lucy May saying that Jay ain't dumb and somebody would have seen him off the road and there are a lot of tourists there? Alifiria clearly saw him. Why aren't these people getting their stories straight? Why isn't Lucy showing her face? I wonder if Lucy has any scars on her face. Usually people who don't show their faces in interviews try to avoid showing their face because they are definitely hiding something. 
she must have definitely told Sky News that I'm not going to show my face because of the trolls and people are going to troll me. Which they fell for. Because obviously, they just want to get the interview. Pay attention to Lucy May. She doesn't seem to have much empathy. She didn't even go to pick up Jake, or Jay, sorry, when he called. And literally cried for help. He said, I want a drink. I'm thirsty. I've cut my leg on a cactus. Those are all emergency things. But yet again, Lucy May Law ignored him. Could it be because Jay was never in massacre? I think Lucy was told what to say since she could be involved in rug business and such things. There's been a lot of rumors going around it. And I've checked into her Facebooks, Tom Hilton's, all of them. I noticed their friends. I noticed that they took a trip to Malta a month before the Tenerife trip. Could it all have been planned in Malta? And they followed the plan. In Tenerife. Why isn't this young woman not showing her face? And how well does she know Ayub? Actually, it's a bit strange. Sorry, his name is Ayub. 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 Qasim and Rocky. It's just that I, feel, I find it kind of strange when I hear all the YouTube creators saying, Ayob, Ayob, but the start I was wondering if it was a Spanish or some, some other name. But it's an Arabic name, Ayub. So I wonder how well does she know Ayub? I wonder how well Lucy actually knows Jay. How well does she know him? Another thing I very, find very strange is I always like to go back to the interviews, the mainstream news interviews, and do my active listening. I find a lot usually there, and there's so many things that does not sit right with me in Jay Slater's case. You have Debbie, Jay's mother, talking about how she encouraged Jay to take this vacation to Tenerife. Obviously, she's, she, she didn't see this coming. I feel sorry for her. Condolence to the families. Rest in peace, Jay. But what I find strange is she said that I told Jay you're going to enjoy this vac vacation so much that you'll come back wanting to go back to different kind of events and festivals. I wonder where she got that idea from. Could it be possible that Lucy May spoke to Jay about working in these events Selling tickets, selling rugs, because Lucy May sells tickets and she's always searching for tickets to sell on, I guess. And she takes a lot of trips from different places, from Belgium to Holland, the Netherlands, to many other places within 24 to 48 hours. How can she afford this lavish lifestyle is a question. There has to be awareness put out for young people going to Tenerife 
and these islands. There's a lot of human trafficking, a lot of S trafficking, rugs, overdoses, organ trafficking, etc. So we need to put out awareness for this so that we don't have more cases like Jay Slater that happen. First of all, how are you feeling about the way things are? You know, it's 72 hours since you spoke to Jay. Well, it's actually even been longer than 72 hours now. It was 72 hours at half eight this morning. And obviously that, that's a long time to be going without food, without water. And I just think with the amount of time that's gone by, I feel like a little bit more could have been done on the authorities part over here. Um, but yeah, it's been awful. I've, I've, honestly, I've never been so worried in my life. Like, I, I, it's just the unknown as well. Like, you literally just, you don't know what's happened. You don't know where he's gone. Like, his last drop pin wasn't even on a road. Like, there's a reason he's gone off road, I think. Like, why, why is he not carried on the path? He's not a stupid boy, do you know what I mean? Like, he would have stayed on the road, like, this, it was at 8am as well, so, well, just after 8am, so that's, like, the perfect time. It's not cold at night, There's it's not midday heat, so there's hikers, there's tourists, there's photographers, like, there's, like, people around. He's not stupid. He would know to stay on the road, and then he'd walk past someone and say, look, um, sorry. So Lucy May is actually indirectly admitting that this is not like Jay's behaviour, to go off-road and to go into the mountains and ravines. She said he's not a stupid little boy. What really happened to G? Did Lucy actually go home early? Was there any CCTV cameras that caught her going home early? Are we supposed to trust the Tenerife police? Let's not forget, if Lucy is working with drugs and if she's working for big time mobsters, we know that some of Tenerife police are corrupt. What would make us believe that they would tell us if Lucy actually left early from the festival? If the clip on the beach is true, then we can actually allegedly place Lucy there because we hear her saying, no, Jay, no, Jay. What happened that day? What happened that night? I don't know. I can't explain it. It's just different. He's excited, he's got a zest for yeah. life. He wants to yeah. go and enjoy every moment to the fullest. Yeah, he does, he does, and he does that. He did that anyway. So you were actually on the phone to him that morning. Pay attention to what Brad Hargreaves said. Jay's friend. One of the last pe people he spoke to. Last person he spoke to. Besides Lucy. He said that, yes, he used to like doing that. And then he said, He used to do that. He started by saying he used to do that, and then he corrected him by saying, he corrected himself by saying, he used to. Let, pay attention to this interview because Brad did this interview 11 days after Jay was reported missing. So they've already started snitching on themselves. He used to do like doing that, which is past tense, and all of a sudden, he used to do that, which is present tense. Brad Hargreaves is an important mem person in this case. Just like Brandon. Because I find it a red flag that he said he could hear Jake going off the road. 
His feet were sliding off on the road. Small stones and rocks and all that, I guess. And he said he didn't think anything of that. I find that to be very strange. Because after finding out that Jay was going off the road, was sliding off the road, why did it take 11 days for Brad Hargreaves to come out and say what he heard on the phone that could have actually helped the searchers? His mother's the one running the Facebook narratives. The interview with Brad and Jay's mother seemed to me like Brad Hargreaves' mother wasn't there for emotional support. I believe she was there to run the narrative to make sure Debbie does not say something that could implicate Brad, Lucy, Brandon, etc. That's what I believe, in my opinion. Why did it take Brad 11 days to do the interview? And why is Lucy not showing her face? Days. We do one day a festival. I'd be tired and rough in the morning. Just waking up fresh to go and do it all again. It's just everything we've done like that has just been, I don't know, I can't explain it, it's just different. He's excited, he's got a zest for yeah. life, he wants to yeah. go and enjoy every moment to the fullest. Yeah, do, he does, and he does that, he did that anyway. So you were actually on the phone to him that morning, he video called you, tell me what he was saying to you. He was on the phone and he goes, I got walking down all around that road, and he's gone over a little bit, like a little, not a big job, just a little tiny little drop, he's going down there. He goes, I'll ring you back, I'll ring you back, because I think someone else was ringing him. And he'll get you probably, if if thinking like me, he would have went back up and started walking around the path again. He wouldn't have gone all that way down there. So you said that you could see his feet and he was actually sort of sliding down the hill. Like you could hear the ropes. Yeah, he was, that's how I knew he, were, he went off the road. Because you could hear like, if we, when you walk on gravel or whatever it is, you can, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, it's storms. Were you concerned at that point? And not at the time, no, because we were both like laughing about it. Think he said, "Look where I am." Like we just, met. I just come out of a festival myself, because he were, he didn't seem concerned on the phone until we knew how far away we were. Yeah. I said, "Put your location on." He said, "And I would a fifty-minute drive or a forty-hour walk. I don't know if it's accurate or not." Yeah. So I said to him, "Well, it's only a fifty-minute drive. Get a taxi." And what do you hope might be the outcome? Can he come along? Brad said that he was concerned when he put on the location and saw how far off Jay Slater was. Why didn't you go and get him if you're concerned? Why didn't you call for the police? You could see that your friend was in a tough situation. And it still took you 11 days to come forward with important news, like you did a video camera, you did a video call with Jay, may he rest in peace. You saw him sliding down, going off road. All those was a concern, but you said you were laughing about it. But then you put the location on, Jay turned his location on, and you saw how far in he was, but yet y'all did not do anything about it. Make this make sense. I feel about anything. It's been, I've been here now, we've been missing for 10, 11 days, and every day I mean, my mind's just going blank. I don't know what to say anymore. Obviously everyone's just come home, and praying he comes home every night. I still got, still got hope for him. I still feel like he's somewhere. So Brad sat with the important information that he had, but he thought, let me hold on to this information for 10 to 11 days and let 